God eternal. You are God eternal. You are God eternal. Thank you, Jesus. You Shout to our God this morning. Let's give him glory. Let's give him the glory this morning. Let's give him the glory this morning. He is God eternal. He is God almighty. He remains on the throne. Lord, you reign in your glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. Hallelujah. He reigns eternal. He is God eternal. He is God eternal. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Shaka taraba si mama mama andaraba. Rekaraba sa ya mandaraba si ke. Teraba sa ya kandaraba. Makuraba sa ya ba 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 ba. Shaka taraba sa ya andaraba. Re ba 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 ba. Kama andaraba si ya ba 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 ba. Shaka ta 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 ta. You are God eternal. Hallelujah.
Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 There is an anointing in the house. You don't have to miss this opportunity. The apostle had already started laying hands and praying for people. There are people that are suffering from sore throat. You are suffering from a sore throat. God is healing you right now. He's touching you right now. God is touching you. The anointing is there. It has been released. The movement of the apostle into the congregation was a release of that anointing. You may be suffering right now. You are heartbroken. You are dejected. You are depressed. God is touching you right now. God is touching you right now. God is just touching you right now. Receive that touch from above. God is doing those things right now. God is doing those things right now. You are feeling much depressed. You are downtrodden. Just come here to the front. God wants to touch you. God wants to touch you. God wants to touch you. You have a migraine headache. It's continuous. It's continuous. It's continuously hitting you. Come to the front. There is a special anointing that will break those things right now. Come to the front. Come to the front. God is in the business of healing. God is in the business of healing. You have a stiff neck. You have a stiff neck. Your neck is giving you problems. It is stiff. You can turn as you wish. God wants to touch you right now. Come to the front. God is going to touch you and cause healing to flow in your body. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a mother who has got a daughter, a child who is constipated. Problems with your tummy. The daughter's tummy is a girl. Just bring her to the front. God is going to touch that child right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shanda raba sike teke rebe, rupa taraba siye kende rebe, rusika taraba shia mamanda raba, resma kanda raba shie kete rebe, laba baba anda raba soyoko torobo, nas meke terebe siya baba baba baba. Please bring that child to the front. We want God to take that child and heal that child in the name of Jesus. O raba sayaka taraba, masuya baba baba anderebe sayaka. Shiba ba 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 ba, ndenderebe sayaka taraba, keraba sayaka ndaraba, shuma mama manderebe, rasmo kondo robo, tearaba sayaka ndaraba, shema mama ndaraba siko, shema mama ndaraba siko toko robo, teraba sayaba. You are God eternal. 
You are God eternal. You are God eternal. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty to save. You are a saving God. Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Shayaka Taraba, Shimama 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 You are God eternal. You are God eternal. You are mighty to save. You are mighty to save. Lord, you reign forever. You reign, you reign, you reign. Thank you, Jesus. You are God eternal. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are mighty to save. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you reign. You reign in glory. You are God. You are God. Thank you, Jesus. You are God eternal. You are mighty. You are mighty to save. Lord, you reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign in glory. You are God. 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 You are God eternal. Thank you, Jesus. You are mighty, Lord. You are mighty to save, oh God. Lord, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. You reign in glory, Lord. You are God eternal. You are God eternal. You are eternal. Thank you, Jesus. Shaka tataraba sima mandaraba. Riba baka taraba sikoyondo. Shenaraba sayaka taraba. Show me a car, Tarabasi. Tarabasi.
Singing, join in the singing. Let my eyes Thank you, Lord Jesus. See your glory as I lift my heart in worship. Thank you, Jesus. As I raise oh, my voice to you, let my eyes see your beauty. Thank you, Lord, for your greatness. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for showing your glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's remain in this attitude of worship and let's hear the voice of the Lord through our sister. Thank you, Lord. I believe the Lord is saying to us, yes, we can finish it. He 
as individuals that because of the great end harvest, great time end harvest, God is looking for partners. God is looking for partners. Partners who are going to showcase his greatness. Partners who are going to showcase his grace. Partners who are going to show forth, who are going to showcase his glory. God is looking for ambassadors. Ambassadors who are going to go out and reflect the greatness, the grace, and the glory of God. An ambassador does not speak of himself, but he speaks about the, glory, the kingdom that is representing him. So God is saying, I'm looking for partners in this season, partners who will express my greatness, partners who will express my grace, partners who will be the expression of my glory. I'm looking for glory-filled houses, temples that are filled of my glory. I'm looking for those who are going to shine as beacons of righteousness. This is not an ordinary word which God has given us this year as victory, but God is coming to partner with us. It's a three-dimension package, and God wants us to carry that three-dimension pack package in fullness. May we go out and reflect, be the expression of his greatness, of his grace, and of his glory. May we be glory-filled houses. Hallelujah. Isaiah volunteered and said, send me. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, God says, I looked for a man and I couldn't find one. The call is still as it was then and it is still now. Hallelujah. Before I call our dead to come and minister, I want you guys to sing the first song that you sang. That is our theme scripture. That is the, the, the song that speaks into our theme. So hear the words, sing with understanding, hallelujah. That's all what it is. Then our Father will come and minister to us, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <coughs>
God as the man of God is ministering to us. Thank you, Jesus. Music team, thank you very much. Thank you so much, music team. God bless you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to him this morning. We just bless him. He is a great God. And we love him this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Thank you for your presence, your anointing. Thank you that you're here, Lord, to touch us and to minister to us. You're here to strengthen us for this week. And so we bless you and give you praise. Bless your word, Lord. May our eyes be opened, our hearts receive your word today in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Greetings in Jesus' name. It's wonderful to be here today. And uh, there is just such a presence today. It's going to be hard for me to start preaching because I don't know where to begin. Because I finished halfway through last week. And, uh, I don't want to repeat what I said. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, we will begin. Uh, I just want to greet the Sabanda family, extend, extend our condolences to them, and just know that the Lord will be with you. The Holy Spirit comfort you and strengthen you in the days of our And my encouragement is just draw near to him. Hallelujah. We need to serve the Lord. Not because of what has happened, but we need to serve the Lord. Can you say amen this morning? Hallelujah. We need to have a connection with Him and walk closely with Him. Hallelujah. I'll ask you not to just read our scripture. Ephesians 3. Verse 14, Ephesians 3, verse 14, prayer for spiritual power. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. I pray that he may grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power in the inner man through his spirit, and that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width, height and depth of God's love, and to know the Messiah's love that surpasses knowledge, so you may be filled with all fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 That's our theme scripture for the year. And out of that, I just uh, picked up uh, three words. Greatness, grace, and glory. Now, when we begin, it often doesn't seem much. But I believe it will build along the way. And there'll be clarity and there'll be direction. And uh, we'll see and understand the purpose of God. Now, last week I spoke about the grace of greatness of God. And basically uh, shared an introduction from chapter 1 of Ephesians right through to where we are today. 
It's okay. It's okay. It's going to get better. That's if she survives. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't want to repeat there. I want to just continue. I do want to cover the aspect of grace today. So just very quickly, we saw what he did in Ephesians 1, 2 and Three up to where we are. And basically it has everything to do with us, our salvation and our service for the Lord. From chapter 4 we see now the church. And our responsibility as believers. So let me pick up again and just talk a little on the greatness. And this morning I want to begin by sharing on the grace, greatness of his ability. I think we've come to the place where we fully understand that it's many times we can't do what we need to do. We certainly can't do the things that Paul mentions in the in the in these verses. But now we get to chapter 3 and round verse 19 and 20 and 21. We find the, the word abide or able, should I say. We see that God is able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think and it's according to the power that is within us it's not our power, it's his power. Hallelujah. Amen. So we understand that. If we understand that, there's a lot of things we cannot do that is in ourselves. But with God's help, by the leading of the Spirit and by the, the wisdom of the Word and the power that's in us, we're able to do amazing things. So let's just talk about that just for a moment. The word able uh, in the context simply means to be capable strong powerful I checked a dictionary and the dictionary says having the power skill means or the opportunity to do something so really that is what we're looking at our God is a God who possesses according to the word all power in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we settle that? He possesses all power in heaven and on the earth. Secondly, our God is the God of creation. All things were made by Him. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, we don't have to consider that. See, He is before all things. And by Him all things consist. Our God is a God of revelation. Ephesians 1 verse 9 says, making known to us the mystery of his will. According to his purpose, which he has set forth 
in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So all knowledge, all understanding comes from him. Of course, our God is a God of salvation. You see, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in this flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Amen. We know that there is no other way to God. Our God is a God of resurrection. Revelation 1.18 And the living one I died and behold I'm alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and Hades. So death isn't an issue anymore. Because we serve a God of resurrection. Hallelujah. For the Savanda family it's not an issue. It's something we've got to live with, yes. Because a loved one has departed. But in Christ there is comfort and strength. And he helps us continue. And one day we will be together. Our God is a God of manifestation. We, we're talking about this God, the greatness of his ability. Amen. Amen. See, many times he's moved in power on behalf of others. And let me say, I believe that this is a year we will see God move on our behalf. Look at somebody and say, God is going to move on my behalf. Look at somebody else and say, God is going to move on my behalf. There's circumstances and situations that we don't have control over and we need God to move in them. Hallelujah. Amen. And we will see him do that. If he could do it for Moses, Noah, David, Elijah. If he could provide for the widow, the three Hebrew boys, Daniel. If he could feed 5,000. If he could move on behalf of the disciples. He can surely move on our behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. And we've got to come to that place where we we will believe that. But our situation isn't isolated. It's not a standalone thing. It's not just me. In fact, it's not poor me. His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. He'll Amen. supply our needs. He will undertake for us. In Jesus' name. You see, Paul's point is that our God is able to do all these marvelous things. Uh, not just what I've mentioned, but much, much more. He can do the things that we require done in our lives. He's more than able to give us the great blessings Paul prayed for in this particular portion of Scripture. You see, he's able to empower us. He's able to to enable us to know his love and to show that same love to others. He's able to enable us to grasp who he is and, and all that he has, has done, done for us in Jesus. Jesus. Beloved, our God is capable, powerful, strong, and we should praise him for who he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am happy to report this morning 
That I saw somebody respond in love. I need you, you need me. I need you, you need me. Somebody needs us. And uh, I watched that being played out this morning. You might not have, but I noticed. Thank you, Pastor Davy. Hallelujah. Amen. He rescued somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He rescued somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. So now the connection has been made. My second thought this morning <laughs> under the greatness <laughs> is that the greatness of his abundance. <laughs> Paul says that God is <laughs> able to do exceedingly abundantly <laughs> above <laughs> all that we ask or think. The phrase exceedingly <laughs> abundantly above has the idea of going above and beyond. Is going further than you would normally go. You see, God's ability exceeds the length to which our minds can think. His ability goes beyond the limits of what we can ask. So now, verse 20 is a pyramid of praise declaring God's ability. And so this is how we read it. He is able. He is able to do. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can ask. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can ask Hallelujah. Amen. So if we can break it down like that and go step by step by step, it should build faith in our hearts. There should be no question in the mind of any believer that God is able. But far too many of us fail to enjoy the privilege of seeing him do that in our lives. Simply because we fail to follow the pattern of living mentioned in these verses. I said last week, or I've said, we've got to make this a year that is serious. Be serious this year. Amen. Amen. If you're going to fool around and play around and be on the fringes, you're not going to be where God wants you to be. Not in, in, the, in the middle where his presence is. My experience with the presence of God has been one that is accurate. It's precise. Yes, it can be everywhere. But you, you've got to be in that exact spot to connect with it. And this year, you've got to connect with it. You've got to connect with it. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that's the challenge. See, when we are walking in his power, when we are walking in his love, when we are walking filled with his fullness, that's when we are able to tap into his 
awesome power and they will influence our lives. So when we are walking in him and in his love, he works in us and through us to accomplish the things he desires in our lives. In other words, it does not fall to us to make the Christian life happen. Our duty is to yield to him. And when we do, His power transcends our weakness and enables us to live for Him and accomplish great things for His glory. Hallelujah. You see, we're trying to do things and it ends up in our own strength. Simply because we're not in that place where he is. I do believe every one of us wants a closer relationship with him. We all desire to live a cleaner life, more holy lives. We want to honor the Lord and serve him faithfully. We ask for that. We pray for that. Often we think we will never achieve our spiritual goals. And again, I want to emphasize, in ourselves, we can't. But at the same time, I want to say that his power exceeds the limits of our weakness. And he is able to help us achieve those things that lack in our lives. The The holiness and the godliness and the other things that we are weak in. This morning I thank God that there is no limit to his power. You see, he can still move mountains. He still changes lives. He still lifts burdens. He meets needs. And he can change the life of saints and transform them. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, that's just a touch of his ability and his greatness. So now I want to go on to the grace aspect. And again, we find that in the B part of verse 20. Let's first just try and establish this thing, grace. I went to a dictionary and this was the conclusion. Grace, the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. Now, I kind of like that definition because that's how I see grace. Amen. Amen. It's clear, it's precise, it says everything that needs to be said. And there's no other stuff. So let's uh, share a quick story. A rich man and a poor man were both members of a certain church. We're talking about grace. The rich man desired to do an act of benevolence. So he sent a sum of money to a friend. Asking him to give it to the poor man. And he said, the best way, however you want to do it, do it. So the friend sent 
The poor man, $25. And wrote in a note. This is yours. Use it wisely. There is more to follow. After a while, he sent another $25 and said, more to follow. Again and again, he sent money to this poor man, always with the cheering words, more to follow. So it is with the wonderful grace of God. There's always more to to follow. And we'll never be able to exhaust it. Hallelujah. That unmerited favor. That blessing. Just when we think there's no more, there's more to follow. Look at somebody and say, more to follow. You see, that's the grace of God. More to follow. The grace of God is is the grounds of our salvation. And because the Lord extended His grace towards us, it proves that He loves us. It proves that He put us into His eternal plan. It proves He sent His Son to die on the cross. It proves He sent the gospel message to us. It proves that he sent the Holy Spirit to convict us and to live in our hearts. He saved us when we called on him. And his grace continues to sustain us day after day, moment after moment. More to come. There's more to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me remind you in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. There the word comes to Paul and it says, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul goes on and he says, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, the grace of God also walk, works in our lives to help us accomplish His will. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a year where we need to accomplish His will. God is going to speak to us and we're going to need to respond. So His grace empowers us. Paul tells us that the Lord is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Second week of the year. And already are pushing the scripture. I must have, in the two weeks, must have repeated it many times. Guess how many more times you're going to hear it. Many more. Hallelujah. I know a couple of serious people that are going to just push it. So not just two weeks, but many weeks. We need to just get this in our spirit. You see, this phrase simply reiterates what I have already said. 
God empowers us to live. Before the day of Pentecost, the Lord made this promise to his disciples. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The word power in that verse is the same word we find in Ephesians 3.20. It refers to inerrant power or the power that resides in a thing because of its nature. Hallelujah. Amen. When the Lord moved into your life, he came in with power. And he came into you to enable you to love him and to serve him and to do the things that he has commanded you. Hallelujah. Amen. So how does this work? If we look at Paul and his life, we see it was the Lord who enabled Paul to preach for his glory. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 4 and 5. Paul says, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what it's got to be all about, beloved. See, the Lord enabled Paul to live for him day by day. And you can just check that out in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 3 to 10. I don't want to read that. But I, I give it to you as a reference. See, the Lord wants you to know that His grace is sufficient for you. He's able to empower you for service. He's able to empower you to live for Him every day. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody came this morning and shared the word of the Lord. Exactly what I'm saying. Our lives need to count for something this year. It's not by our strength or our ability. But it's by His grace that empowers us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's amazing what you can do. Hallelujah. Amen. I said last week, sometimes, you know, you don't have to wait to get the shakes. You don't really have to think about it. You don't even have to pray. But if you just took a step of faith and did what you know, you should do. Often God is there to do something. But you know, we've got to go around the corner and get behind a bush and pray. Come out shaking and, and anointed. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, for me, that's the scary part. Because it never works like that for me. Me, I've got to go first. And when I'm there, believe that the Lord has arrived with me. 
And the only comfort that I have is that I know he promised never to leave me nor forsake me. And therefore where I am, that's where he is. So I know he's there. Hallelujah. Amen. And then it's a case of doing what you know you should do. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not always knowing what and how. Sometimes it's knowing nothing and just going. Mostly it's like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayed for somebody this morning and I don't know why. But I'm trusting that by the end of the service I'll know. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, I know that I know that I know I, I will know. Okay, we're talking about His grace. My second thought is His grace enlivens us. The word enlivens not really a common word. So let me give you its meaning. Enliven simply means to restore to life. To give life to. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm saying his grace enlivens us. Paul says, according to the power that works in us. The power to live for the Lord comes from Him. But it comes from within. Hallelujah. Amen. How is that possible? It's possible only because He lives in us. Let me again say, there's some things that I just know. I know that he never leaves me or forsakes me. I also know that when I say, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, he came into my heart. No doubt. No fear. Nobody's going to take that away from me. I know that I know that I know he lives in my heart. Amen. Amen. When he saves us, the Holy Spirit came into us with power. He empowers us by enlivening us. And he empowers us by imparting his life to us. Paul says it this way. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Look at somebody and say, simple. Hallelujah. How can you debate that? That is a fact. That's what happened. You see, when we yield to him and allow his life to flow from us, we will live lives that are pleasing to the Lord and lives that are empowered by him. Thereby, the Lord will be glorified in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. See, as we live for him, and as we allow him to live through us, he fills us with his life. And he is seen and he is glorified. And he uses us as his life in the world. 
Amen. Remember, you are called to let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father. Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul says that his power works in us. The word work means to be at work. To put forth power. To be operative. When we are yielded to him, he is operative in or operating in our lives. This enlivens us and allows us to bear fruit. Remember Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches, whoever abides in me and I in him, he, it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. His grace empowers us for service. His grace enlivens us for living. So this morning we thank God for His grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Because my His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. In Amen. my weakness, in my lack, He is glorified. In fact, in all of that, I am made rich. Simply because He was made poor. Hallelujah. Amen. Just for a few moments, I think the subject of the glory is kind of vast. We need to think this one through. When I say it like that, I think we need to just let it uh, come upon us. And uh, through meditation and really just getting into the Word. Uh, let this glory be revealed. But God's glory is kind of, uh, it's throughout Scripture. But here Paul reveals it in verse 21. Paul ends his doxology by making a grand statement about the glory of God. So I just want to touch a few things on that. So notice what he says about God and his glory. So the first thing that we need to look at is that place of glory. And Paul, very interesting, says, to him be glory in the church. Not anywhere else. Not in heaven. I think it already exists there anyway. Not anywhere else, but in the church. So this phrase reminds us that the church exists for the sole purpose of bringing glory to God. He is glorified in the church because the church is made up of, of those who have been saved by His grace. He loved us when we deserved to be cast into hell. He reached out to us in love and grace and drew us to himself and saved us when we called on him. He changed our lives. You see, now the responsibility is that we must live for him. Honor his word. And he receives glory from the church. 
Yeah, I can't go past this without saying this. As we love him, we love one another. Look at somebody and say, I love you. Not through your teeth. Say it with a nice smile on your face. Say it like Pastor Tom and Store. They, they're saying it like they love each other. And uh, probably that's the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me say, what I need you, in? you need me. Somebody needs us. As we love him and love one another, he's I just want to take a moment and say this sincerely. Some of last year, or most half of last year and up until now, probably been one of the most trying and hardest times of our life. You know that mother hasn't been well. And, uh, just seems like it's getting worse. We are believing. We are praying. Many of you are. Many others are. And it seems like the pain goes from year to year and somewhere else. And, uh, but it doesn't stop. So it has been a very trying time. Uh, particularly for her. And uh, this week, we, 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 she went for an MRI. Uh, and so the scan has been done. But why I'm bringing this up is this very, this very same thought. If we love him, we love one another. And you know, we've never doubted your love. I just want to thank you that we've experienced it much, much more. Individually, collectively. There's been gifts of money, been been of prayer, help. Hallelujah. And I thank you for that. That expression of love means so much. Now my encouragement is not just to us as leaders. But let's reach out to those that have a need. And fulfill this thing that we've been talking about. But I sincerely want to thank all of those that have done something. Just uh, to let you know that MRI costs 1.3 million. And everything is covered. It's done. And from that which came in, this over. Which we put aside for any further treatments. And so on. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Continue to pray. Continue to extend that love. But let's be aware there are others that need the same. See, as we preach the gospel, as we gather to worship, he's glorified. 
As we sing, we pray, we work, and we serve in the church. He's glorified. The church is the organism that exists to bring glory to his name. And when we function as we should, that's exactly what we do. Everything that we do at the church or in the church should be done with the view to bring glory to him. Every decision we make, every dollar we spend, every rural church we support, must be to his glory. Every person who serves in any capacity needs to perform it to his or her best so that he is glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. See, it's in that that I really believe that the, the Lord will move and be Glory. There's a few other things I wanted to say. But uh, I think we're going to leave that because we're coming back. So in conclusion, let me just share this thought. Not only is there more to follow, but uh, I do believe we must give him glory. The great musician Johann Sebastian Bach said all music should have no other end than to, to the glory of God and the soul's refreshment. Where this is not remembered, there is no real music, but only a devilish hub-dub. Amen. Amen. At the top of every composition he wrote, he put the letters JJ. Those initials stand for Jesus Juva. Which means Jesus help me. Bach ended every composition with the letters SDG. And those letters stand for Solidi Gratia. Which simply means to God alone the praise. And uh, you could add the word glory there. See, Bach had the glory of God at heart of every piece of music that he authored. And beloved, that should be our desire. Everything that we do, we do for his glory. Hallelujah. That's what should be in our hearts. And so it's early in the year. But I trust that it's not going to be light. That this year we would acknowledge his greatness. That every one of us would experience his grace. And every one of us will be able to give him all the glory. Hallelujah. Stand with me to your feet. Put your things down. Put your hands out. Hallelujah. Bow your heads this morning. 
in honor and respect and just fix your heart on him. You know, this might be a good time just to say, Lord Jesus, I'm so grateful for what you've done. So grateful that you saved me. That you filled me with your presence. That you separated me. And Lord, that you're working in me. This will also be a good time to say, Lord Jesus, fill me again. Fill me with your presence. Holy Spirit, just come on me again. And just quicken me. Refresh me. Enliven me. Fill me again, Lord, with your presence. Your power, your anointing. Enable me, Lord, with the good things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. See, there's so many things that we need to be asking him for. This is a good time to do that. Hallelujah. He's not far from you, beloved. In fact, he's in you. And it's his greatest joy to just touch you and, and do something in your life. So right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, just quicken each one, Lord. Yes, Lord. Enliven each one, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, in this year, yes, Lord. we're not looking at the year, mm. but Lord, we're looking to you. Jesus. Lord, there's so many distractions out there. There's so much happening even now. There's so many promises. Yes, Lord. And Lord, already they're failing. Mm. So much that is going to still happen. But Lord, we want it to happen in you. Yes, we want it to happen with you, Lord, yes, and for you. Yes, and so, Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you that as we fix our hearts on you, as we look at you and allow our gaze to be focused on you, yes, Lord. that, Lord, you would transform us, you would change us, yes, you would empower us, yes, you would bless us, you would yes, anoint us, yes, you would increase us, yes, you would cause us to prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that, Lord, as we deliberately and purposefully follow hard after you this year, as we serve you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all, all our being, as we honor you, Lord, as we glorify you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord that your grace is going to be sufficient in Jesus' mighty name. And so, Lord, I thank you. No one would be left behind. Everyone would be in step. Everyone would be up front. Everyone, Lord, would be running with you. I thank you that, Lord, every need is going to be met. That, Lord, no one would perish in Jesus' mighty name. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I declare your blessing. I declare your presence. I declare, Lord, your goodness, your love, the mercy of God, the favor of God upon every single one in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you that the word works mightily in us. Yes, Lord. And that the Holy Spirit abides, Lord. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Appreciate you. Thank you, Lord.